Hello and welcome back to another Drown One review. Today we'll be having a look and a taste of the Chapter 7 Peated Prologue. Yes, Chapter 7. A whiskey maker after my own heart, or I shouldn't say maker, an independent bottler after my own heart. Why? Because, well, if you read my blog, I love storytelling. I love the stories behind the whiskey. I love the tales it has to tell. And this bottler clearly agrees with me because everything they do is literally literature themed. <laughs> okay, that was terrible English, but I'm gonna leave it in there. Hopefully you can have a laugh about it. But literature themed. Okay, I got it now. <laughs> Anyway, the Peter Prologue, the next one in my Explorers Pack lineup. Yes, as you may have noticed, we'll be doing these for a little bit um, because after the first two, this will be the third review. There's a total of six whiskies in my first package of Explorers Pack, and um, of course, there had to be a Peter Dram in there because I love Peter Whiskey, but people that know me expected much more peat than this. That's the funny thing. I surprised almost everyone because this is mildly peated. This is pleasant. This is light. And why did I do that? Because this is the spring edition of my pack. And you might hear the dogs barking. Sorry for that. <laughs> uh, this is the spring edition of that pack. And because it's spring and temperatures are rising quickly, we're going on June soon. It will be very very hot or might be very hot and then i don't like a peated whiskey i mean i love a peated whiskey but not when it's 40 degrees outside and i want to accommodate people in that same way like i want you to go to the bar and in the summer there will be a different pack and in the fall there will be a different pack again and i think that pack will have some great peated whiskies but i want it to fit the season Anyway, without further ado, enough about myself and more about the star of tonight's show, and that is this Chapter 7 Peated Prologue. Now, as you may have picked up already, the, it says more than that. It says, Prologue, blended malt scotch whiskey, an exclusive edition, small batch number 2, peated blend, non-chill filtered, one of 961 bottles, uh, and it's 47.9 ABV. Anyway... Uh, not the clearest thing to call this a name because they also have another prologue which is unpeated. That's why I call it the prologue peated, but I don't think it's the official name. Official name is just uh, small batch number two peated blend. And usually they bring out chapter seven, bring out monologues. Monologues are the single cask offerings, and they do so because they believe every whiskey tells a story every single cask is different and just like if you have a distillery you might be in the same ballpark the same book so to say every cask is a new chapter that's where the name comes from and yeah I like that because I agree with them no two casks are the same every whiskey is unique and these prologues are to give you sort of the sense of their lineup the sense of their lineup and this is their peated offering with, uh, I believe, does it say which region? I don't think it does actually. Um, doo -doo -doo. Nope. It just says that it's uh, the prologue is a tribute to dramming, a semi legal practice of doling out drams to distillery workers between their shifts before the mid 1970s. Anyway. So, not sure which region. I don't think it's Isla. I think it's more Highland, Speyside peated malts, but that's my uh, take flavor wise. And what it does, it just combines sweet, citrusy flavors, uh, a light character with a nice hint of peat. And, um, well, let's dive into the nose to find out more. You can see the pale color. It's very light, very pretty, at least I think so. I much prefer a light color over a colored uh, whiskey that is much darker, but 
more about that some other time. Let's not delve into that subject. Yeah, on the nose, there is a bit, there is a bit of savory side, a bit salty even. Uh, I would call it meat, a bit of meat. Uh, beef jerky comes to mind. Uh, and, and, well, there's, it's more um, a vegetal kind of peat. There's some moss, there's some, uh, a bit of, a bit, bit of mud, a bit of pond water. If you will, like, I like that smell, like, no, it doesn't sound good to many people, but many flavor notes for peated drums don't really sound that good. I mean, if you listen to Lerforic, like, Band-Aids and Licking an Ashtray, it doesn't sound good either. Yeah, that's a delicious drum. But nonetheless, it's more, uh, that's why I think more of, like, it's Highland or Speyside peated malt, because uh, it, it doesn't have the iodine, it doesn't have... Um, it doesn't have the, the brine, the sulfur, well not sulfur, I'm thinking of uh, more tarry kind of notes. Either way, uh, I like it, but it's light, it's delicate, it's actually not the thing that stands out most. It's more grassy notes, apple notes that I'm finding. And vanilla, yeah, well, obviously, probably bourbon casks, it doesn't say, but... It's just nice, and that little meat layer balances out perfectly. It's not overwhelming, this. This might be the perfect ram if you have a friend that is not into peat to introduce them to the category. Maybe they'll like this. It's just a thin layer. Let's delve into the taste. This packs a punch, like it even, like it's more ethanol forward even than the much higher ABV Fergan Harris from the previous episode. This is, it's still lovely. Though. There's black pepper, uh, roast beef, roast beef, uh, roast beef with black pepper, and just vanilla apples. All those classic. Uh, yeah, almost like Highland flavors, but with a peat layer, and uh, it's just done beautiful. And that's the thing, you know, a blended malt, a lot of people are still a bit hesitant when they hear blended. But there's a huge difference between blended scotch and a blended malt. Because blended whiskey, uh, like this, the ones people think of, those are blended with grain whiskies. Now there's nothing wrong with that either. But a lot of them are made to be made cheap, to go into a mixer or whatever, not to drink neat. It's like a, ch a cheap gin, for example. Also nothing wrong with it, it's just meant to enjoy in a gin and tonic. Uh, a red label is not meant, not really to enjoy neat, maybe with a block of ice or something, but that's not its main uh, market. But uh, this one is made to enjoy neat. And many blended malts are, just think of compass box, but also, let's go back to Johnny Walker, they make the green label, which is a blended malt, and it's amazing, it's very good. So, blended malt is basically the same as, well, as what, a, as a single malt, with one difference. The single malt doesn't mean that it was only a single cask or something, that's not how it's made. All the, almost all the whiskey you'll try, unless it's a single cask, is blended. But it's blended with different whiskies in-house. So all of their own whiskies they blend together to give you a consistent product. And blended malts, they use outside malts. So they use a single malt from a different distillery and a single malt from that distillery. And they mix those together and then they create a new profile. And that way you have many, many more colors to paint your picture with. Now, Compass Box obviously are masters at this. Just look at some of their bottlings. The Flaming Heart from last year is one of my favorite whiskies of all time. It's just masterfully done. And you couldn't achieve that with just single malt, just being a single malt. You need malts from different distilleries. Anyway, enough about that. This chapter seven was an absolute treat and I was happy to include it in my Explorers pack. 
and I hope you'll enjoy it. And this is a PETA drum that is perfectly suited for a campfire night. When it's still a bit hot outside, you can use some peat because it's cooling off, but not too much and not too overwhelming. I hope you'll enjoy it. Slide your button.